This is the moment the kingdom comes. Push back the darkness by your light. When the lost, the time is now. This is the moment the kingdom comes. Hallelujah. Amen. Come closer. If there's a if there's a, an empty seat in front of you, occupy it. Let the latecomers take the back seats so that they don't disrupt us when they come in. Hallelujah. Please move, 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 move much closer. Move much closer. Amen. Amen. Makes a difference, you know. You know, those seats, they, they, there's no allergy if you sit in them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no one's going to chase you away from that chair if you sit in it. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Uh, let's start from verse 8. Hallelujah. And the Lord commended there and just steward. Hey, eh? Hallelujah. Because he had done wisely, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Hallelujah. Eh? Eh. Says the Lord did what? Commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Hallelujah. Today I told you that I'm going to challenge the way you think. Amen. Because a lot of children of the light are living way below their potential because they think that naivety is spiritual. Hallelujah. Gullibility is not spirituality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Being gullible is not a spiritual attribute. Being so naive that you do things, eh? And then you're there and they're like, but the people are evil. The people are bad. Yes, they are. Hallelujah. Jesus even said it. I'm sending you out as sheep among what? Wolves. So that means we live in a world where people are crooked. They are corrupt. They are thieves. They are killers. And Christ tells us to be as cunning as serpents. Hallelujah. But gentle as doves. The problem is some of us have decided to be only doves. But we've left the being cunning out. Then we wonder why we are not succeeding in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the most successful people you can see, two people that you can see that should be a model for all of us for how we should operate in this world. Joseph and Daniel. Because Joseph and Daniel are children of God operating in a secular environment. Amen. A highly secular environment an environment where God is not even worshipped at all, yet they are thriving. How are they managing to thrive? Because Joseph never, never converted Egypt to worshipping Yahweh. Neither did Daniel. Babylon kept worshipping their many gods. Hallelujah. Amen. But they advanced kingdom purposes. Why? Because they used wisdom. Amen. Some of us, the problem is, we have gotten accustomed to narratives of power. We've never understood that actually wisdom is greater than power. There's the reason why the Bible doesn't say power is the principal thing. It says wisdom is the principal thing. Hallelujah. So our Default approach to issues is to challenge them. 
our default thought and mindset when we see a problem is to think, let's face it head on like a bull. That's not how the Bible tells us to operate. Hallelujah. In fact, for me, there are two people I like to contrast. You had John the Baptist and you had Jesus. They're even cousins. Hallelujah. Mm, they're cousins. John the Baptist, fiery, passionate, cannot keep his mouth shut about Herod marrying Herodias. Yes, it's true. Herod had married his brother's wife, Herodias. He should not have done so. But Herod is king. He has soldiers. He has an army. John the Baptist is trying to rebuke a godless heathen Roman basing on kingdom standards. The guy doesn't even subscribe to your set of morals. Hallelujah. And he loses his head for it. Jesus never said a word about Herodias. Hey, hallelujah. Anywhere, do you see anywhere in the Gospels where Jesus says anything about it? No. Jesus never even said a word about the Romans. The Roman culture was terrible. Slavery was part of the empire. Pederasty was normal in the Roman Empire. All manner of things were very okay. You don't see Jesus walking around raging about them. Abarumi bano. You don't hear him saying anything of the sort. The problem with us believers, we get into places and then we want to enforce our moral code on people who don't even subscribe to it. Hallelujah. Some, you need to read between the lines. When Daniel gives the king the dream, and then interprets it. They made him the chief witch. Yes. He became the chief of all the wizards and the astrologers and the soothsayers. Aye. Isn't that true? Daniel became the chief witch. Hallelujah. He kept his standards. He didn't impose them on them. He knew. The people I'm dealing with, this is their belief system. These are their gods. You come and you work in a company. And look, the guy is not born again. None of them are born again. But you want to tell them, you don't do this. You don't do that. You are the chief complainer. You have your standards. But now you are at work. Shut up. Hallelujah. Now you are at work, you do your job. Amen. So Daniel kept functioning in Babylon's system. Egypt had many gods. Joseph functioned in Egypt as the governor of the entire land. In fact, you know, let me tell you, part of the reason why it would be a terrible thing today why good people, in fact, never last in political positions is because they are naive. Most of you today, if they told you to become the president, you want to start waging a war on all the witches, then you want to get on to the other ones. that are... You don't know that, guess what? If you become the president, you're the president of the witches, you're also the president of all the pagans and everyone else. Ah, Shabakaya. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Some of you, you get into government. Guess what? There are some things that happen in government that are not right. Hallelujah. But then you want to get in there and become a crusader. They will kill you. <laughs> Hallelujah. They will do what? They will kill you. Sometimes wisdom eh, is in knowing it says Jesus commended the unjust steward. Can you imagine for his wisdom? But look at the statement he said. The children 
of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Hallelujah. One time I was talking to someone. He works in government. And the way their system was functioning, he was like, I'm in a dilemma here. They send me a big bunch of money. Then the ones who sent it, they tell me, where's the so-called, where is the co where is the Huh? Then also do what you're supposed to do. Said, I don't know what to do. Said, but I'm supposed to account for all of it. Hallelujah. So I told him, uh-huh. He's like, I can't take it. I'm quitting this job. I told him, oh, Mister, who gave you the job? God. Did he know the people in there like that? Yes. I said, so your problem is a wisdom problem. Hallelujah. Amen. So I told him, it's, it's, it's a very simple problem. When they send you the money, they are the ones who sent it. They are telling you, send half of it back to them. You send it back to them and tell them, now you submit to me your accountability for that money that I sent to you. I will also account for the part that I kept. I'll get it all together and send it in. So I don't have to create accountability for your money. I don't have to create all manner of receipts. You do your thing. Now that's wisdom. Because eh, you're not going to uproot the entire government <laughs> in your quest. Eh? Hallelujah. Amen. The children of, of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of the light. We are sheep among wolves. Daniel never let his integrity go. Every day he prayed without fail. He was known to be straight, and, but he was also dealing and living in a society that was different from him. And he also didn't wake up and think that he is going to be, yeah, to challenge it and uproot it. All he could do is walk for God, but also walk wisely. Hallelujah. Amen. Too many children of the light are naive and gullible. That's how we even get cheated. We fall for con men because we think everyone is like us. Hallelujah. You know, you, when you're a pastor, you keep hearing of disputes between people in your church. Then you want to ask them, why didn't you write a contract? But you see, they're a member of the church. Why didn't you ask for a contract? Hallelujah. Yes. Because as I am in church, eh? now, when bank wechi wewa yo, hallelujah, Pentecostal handshake, mukama kuom. Hallelujah. If we are doing business, the lawyer's office, with a properly signed agreement in place, Hallelujah. With every corner sewed up neatly. Every loophole closed. Hallelujah. Yes. Because it's business. But we have a tendency to be so naive. But I thought he was a fellow believer. Pastor, I even saw him talking to you the other day. And so, just because they talk to me or they walk with me doesn't mean it qualifies them to do business with you. Hallelujah. Doesn't even mean they make a good employee. Just because they can pray in tongues the whole night. Hallelujah. You still got to give them a good employment contract that has targets. And measurable. Okay, P. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Light and naive. Ignorant of the devil's what? Wiles. We are not meant to be ignorant 
of how the devil operates the things he does. Hallelujah. Amen. You are a believer. You are selling your car and you, it's, you allow someone to come to you and bring you cash and you hand it over. Then you discover about what they fake cash. Why didn't you take them to the bank? Hallelujah. Naivety. Christ warns you that you're living among wolves. Sheep should not be trusting wolves. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Christ explicitly tells you to do what? But you see, John eh, is going around telling Herod who is king. The things he's telling them are he's telling him are based on Jewish law. The other guy is a Roman. He operates by a whole different set of rules. Child of God, let me tell you something. Do you know the Bible is political as it is spiritual? Eh? Tell your neighbor this is strong meat now. Hallelujah. Strong meat is for them who by reason of what? Of exercise. Eh? By reason of use have exercised their senses to discern in good and evil. When you grow beyond a certain level in the study of the word, you get to a place where you realize that things are no longer as black and white as you thought they were. Hallelujah. Yes. When you're young, they tell you fire is bad, it burns. When you're older, you realize fire cooks. Hallelujah. It warms. It does many things. Hallelujah. But you need to handle it with care. Hey, some of us have persisted at remaining at fire is bad. So we cannot enjoy the benefits of fire because we, we, it's stuck in our heads that fire is bad. They used to point at the socket and say, bah, bad. Not your socket. But at that level, they had to tell you, bad, don't touch. Now you're older, you know better. Put a plug in, not your finger. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the same thing. There are things, when you begin to read the scriptures, you begin to read in between and you see that there are things you didn't see, you didn't understand. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me give you an example. God tells Samuel, go to Bethlehem, to the house of Jesse, there, among his sons, you will anoint someone to be the next king. What does Samuel say? He says, my Lord, Saul will kill me if he hears about it. Hallelujah. In today's believers thinking, he would say, how, how dare you even doubt God? God told you. Eh? He will protect you. You go. In fact, today's believer will want to even bring Jesse's family to the town square and anoint from there. When Samuel huh, tells, go on to the next verse, sharp attire. How can I go if Saul here it, you kill me? Look what the Lord said. Take what? A hypha with thee and say. <laughs> Who told him? God didn't tell him, I am sending a legion of angels with you. <laughs> he told him, take what? And say, I have come to do what? Sacrifice to the Lord. Did he sacrifice? Yes, he did. Amen. So he wasn't lying. Yeah? Was it the main purpose for his coming? No. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Mukama na kugama anku tumye e chaino obulire injiri. No genda kuemba se no feeling a yin. Papa's missionary. They won't give you a visa. They won't. Hallelujah. You need a haifa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
ato subule haleluya na yenge siye main reason ya kozeche iyo kutute haleluya the children of this of the light need to also be cunning like serpents haleluya amen but we have a tendency to be naive and that's why we are struggling amen believers keep losing elections why do they lose elections they don't know how to speak political language hallelujah they don't know how to speak the language of politics shambrakai eh let me tell you you host the president here eh don't start talking about revival and the holy ghost Telling have interest in those things Echamulese kubo ina crowd diba ina votes. Shash. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the reality. Hallelujah. Yes. Chechamulese. Amen. So now you've got to figure out how do I meet his need while also advancing the cause of the, of the church. Hallelujah. Amen. And some people who don't understand these things, they start saying, now you see, that guy has sold out. No, he hasn't. He's sharp. He understands the environment in which he operates. Hallelujah. <laughs> he understands the world eh, is not going to be, do things for you because you are right. People are motivated by other things altogether. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So you've got to figure out what motivates them while also advancing the cause of Christ. Paul shows up in Athens. These guys worship many gods. Many. If he starts by telling them all your gods are fake, no one will pay any attention to him. Nobody will pay attention to him. So he looks around. And they have many altars to every god they've ever heard of. And then they have an altar to the unknown god. And he says, and now that one is the one I've come to tell you about. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's that unknown god, that one. Yeah? He basically comes and says, you're already worshipping him. You just don't know who you're worshipping. Now let me tell you about him. That's wisdom. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Tell your neighbor 2024. I refuse to be naive. And I refuse to be gullible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God has blessed me in this world. Say, God has blessed me in this world. And he wants me to prosper. Therefore, I'm pursuing wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. We, we must open our eyes and our understanding. The Bible is replete with examples. Hallelujah. When you read David's last words to Solomon, you might think that he's purely motivated by righteous concerns. There's a lot of politics in it. He tells Solomon, Joab, Joab or you? Hmm? He killed Amasa and Abna. Better men than him. Do not let his hoary head go down to the grave in peace. He says, Abishai. Meanwhile, these are his nephews. Joab and Abishai were the sons of his sister Zeruiah. I Huh? You see that? Huh? But what you don't understand is that it might sound like David is settling old scores. He's not. Hallelujah. David knows these two guys were so strong that even him, he couldn't handle them when he was king. There's a point at which he said, what shall I do with these sons of Zeruiah? 
They were too much for him. And he has recognized something. These guys supported Adonijah for king. If Solomon leaves them around, there will be a coup. Yes. Hallelujah. Read between the lines. Yeah? So by telling Solomon to deal with them, he's helping Solomon deal with potential problems in his reign. Because Adonijah is older than Solomon. He's more entitled to the throne despite David having chosen Solomon. Hallelujah. Amen. He's not naive. Hallelujah. He looks at the situation and he figures a way to handle it. Look at what he says about Shimei. When David is fleeing from Absalom, Shimei is casting David and casting stones. When David comes back having won, Shimei, of course, is very apologetic. Yeah? But remember, David is highly aware that, look, Absalom stole the hearts of Israel away from me. Even though we've killed Absalom and taken over again, the hearts of these people are still not yet back with me. So if I show myself as vengeful and delivering retribution upon everyone who wronged me when they turned, everyone else is going to be mistrustful of me. So he has no choice but to be conciliatory. Doesn't mean he has forgotten. So he says, Solomon, Shimeyoyo, find a, a wise way to handle him. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Wisdom. Wisdom. Amen. The problem is, if you are naive, and now here is the thing. The call to being cunning is not a call to discard your principles and become immoral and terrible. Amen. That's why he says, cunning as serpents, but gentle as doves. So, you're not doing harm. However, being as cunning as a serpent also means that I am aware of the tricks other people are going to use. Hallelujah. So that people don't take advantage of me. I can see the tricks a mile off. I know this one's trying to manipulate me like this. Hallelujah. Girls in church end up married to guys eh, who just came in and pretended. And, and they were just naive. Some things you should be able to see a mile away. In fact, what's interesting is normally your relatives who are not born again, you bring the guy and they're like, ha. Ah. For them, their eyes are open. They can see. Huh? You, you are all lost in Banange. He loves Jesus. And afterwards, when things backfire, like whatever, why? Because many of us we've gotten the idea in our heads that somehow to be spiritual means switch off your brain. Hallelujah. Amen. Believers are led astray by false prophets because they switch their brains off. You don't ask certain things and say, but that thing. You know, because somehow we've been convinced that faith is illogical. So the moment someone brings it as an issue of faith, we imagine the logic must therefore go out of the window. Faith has a logic of its own. It may not be the logic of the world, but it still has a logic. It has these ways in which things, the, the principles of God work. And when you educate yourself to them, you get to know and you're like, no, 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 no. I'm being taken for a ride. Hallelujah. Amen. But because people don't question, they end up in trouble. So many believers eh, are like sheep without a shepherd. Because they switch their heads off. They can't reason and say, but that doesn't make sense. 
Whatever they are saying doesn't add up. Something. I must use my head. Hallelujah. There were some people, you know, I was talking to. And, um, you know, here they were praising this, there was this supposedly great man of God who showed up for a meeting. Hmm? And, I mean, the guy demonstrated power. Huh? People were rolling on the floor, laughter, you know, all these things. And, and they were like, the man of God, he was so focused on the presence of God. He refused all these protocol things. He said, how can they waste a lot of time inviting this one to speak, the other minister, the other governor, the word? He said, I don't want any of those things. We are focusing on the Holy Ghost. I said, uh, who hosted the meeting? A politician. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. If a politician hosts you, be ready to understand that there will be political issues in the meeting. Otherwise, next time they won't host you. You may have gotten your way this meeting, but you've shut the door. Now all the potential people you'd have reached, you will not reach them. Because you didn't understand that that's how these things work. Hallelujah. That if you do a nice big fat meeting in Nambore, hmm, and the president shows up, you give him the microphone because crowd yamrese. Hallelujah. And he needs to address the crowd and say his things. Hallelujah. Amen. And among other things, he says, well, That's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. When he talks about poverty eradication, our God hates poverty. Ah. Our God is a God of prosperity. Hallelujah. No gende rao. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Daniel knew. Hmm? Look at how Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Even when the dream was bad, eh? the tree was cut down, the stump. Look at how Daniel began said, my king, if only this was about your enemies. <laughs> yeah? If this could just be yeah? about your enemies. Brilliant. Hallelujah. Nathan, David has sinned. He is king. Nathan is sent to rebuke the king. Being sent to rebuke a king is a dangerous expedition. You could die for it. The problem is, many of us, we think that because God has sent me, I should just go like a bull knocking into the door. Because God will tell you, David, go and rebuke him. And he won't tell you how. Because he expects you to use the wisdom he has given you in the approach. You think God is the one who told Nathan what parable to tell David? No. Nathan is sitting there and he's thinking, ha! How do I tell the king this one? He says, you know what, king? There were, there were two men. One had one carito lamb. The other one had many. The one who had his little lamb, he kept care, took care of it like his own child. He was, uh, yeah. Then the other one who had many, you know, got a, a visitor. And Bambi, he took the one lamb. This one has, and the one he slaughtered. Now the king is even getting angry at the injustice. How? Who is that man? He must pay. Now, after he has condemned himself properly, he says, you are the one. Wisdom. Wisdom. Look at how Jesus answers Pilate. Are you a king? You are the one who said it. <laughs> are you a king? What you get there? Is he actually a king? Yes, he is. But he knows it's a political question. 
You don't just announce yourself the king when the Romans are the ones in charge. Are you the king of the Jews? Go of your get Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. If you don't see the politics, if you don't see that the Pharisees wanted the Romans to solve the Jesus problem for them. That's why they kept coming to trap him. Should we give taxes to Caesar? They want him to say it so that they can come and say, Oh, Rabba! So that the Romans can fix their problem for him, for them, arrest him and deal with the issue. And he also just plays it. Like Whose face is this? Caesar's. Give Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God's. Wisdom. Hallelujah. Some of us don't know how to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. We read these things and we're like, hey, yes, we are. The Bible says you have the mind of Christ. The problem is, for us, we think the mind of Christ is to have visions and dream dreams and tell people, I see you, you're wearing a white underwear with black dots. We think that's the extent of it. Right? Because we've been conditioned to think that the prophetic, eh? now that's the mind of Christ. Hey, here is a great man of God with a prophetic anointing that has the mind of God. Who told you? The mind of God is a mind of wisdom. The Lord by his wisdom hath established the earth. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. The Lord by his wisdom. If you look at how the world operates, it operates by wisdom. The Lord by his wisdom established laws of physics. Hallelujah. The laws of thermodynamics, all these laws, hallelujah. The Newton's laws of motion, all these things. God eh, didn't just put things there and then he has to uphold them. He, 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 said, he put in place systems and laws that make them work. They just keep working because he established an underlying system that keeps them working. He organized your body and gave it everything. He puts a pituitary gland somewhere here. He does, you know, everywhere the systems are working together. So that God is not constantly monitoring every single body to say now, lung, breathe, close, share. No, it works autonomously. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Imagine if you had to be there and you had to, at all the time, remember to command your heart to beat. Remember to tell the lungs to contract and expand. Yeah? Remember to tell the blood to keep flowing and the white blood cells and all these things. God established a system where these things just keep working. In the background, you never even have to know about it. By his wisdom. That's the wisdom God wants us to work with. Amen. But even when you go into an organization, you say, Lord, give me wisdom to establish systems. Amen. Give me wisdom to establish systems, to come up with unique ideas, to come up with unique ways of doing things. Amen. Our time is running out. Let me give you one last example. Joseph. Joseph had a prophetic gift. Yeah? He could interpret dreams. The Bible says your gift will, make, will do what? Will make room for you. The gift of interpreting dreams is what brought Joseph before Pharaoh. Hallelujah. But what gave Joseph a position as the governor was the advice he added on top of the interpretation. Hallelujah. And that one didn't come from his prophetic gift. No. The prophetic gift said, ah, though your dreams are the same thing. The cattle and the corn is the same thing. Seven years of famine, seven, year, seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. That was the prophetic gift. Then came the administrative gift. What he had learned managing Potiphar's household. What he had learned while managing the prison. Hallelujah. That says, now king, let me give you advice. In the seven years of plenty, collect 20% of the harvest. Store it up for the seven years of famine. What does the king say? 
who else can implement this better than the one who just gave us the advice? If Joseph had stopped at interpreting the dream, this is what would have happened. The king would have said, thank you so much. Yeah? You are free. Here is a bag of gold. And it would be done. Finished. When he adds counsel and wisdom to the gift, the king says, but wait a minute. Here is my own signet ring. I'm putting you in charge of the whole land. I'm the, only in the matter of the throne am I above you. Suddenly, in a moment, Joseph was Potiphar's boss. <laughs> the guy who put him in jail, Joseph is now his boss. Hallelujah. Because he used wisdom. He added wisdom to the gift. Amen. Let's stand up. Our time is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's get an, an offering in our hands. This, mo this month, hallelujah. This month we are sowing in the land and we are believing to receive a hundredfold. Hallelujah. Amen. Get a good offering. Amen. Amen. A good? Yes. We give God our best. We don't give him the dregs. Hallelujah. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Say, Lord, I come to you. I give you my best. Because I'm expecting to receive your best. My heart is expectant. My faith is lifted up. I believe you. The seeds I'm sowing in this first month of the year. They are setting me for a year of abundance, for a year of overflow in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I will testify. I will return bearing my sheaves with me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come, let's give. For there is nothing better than you there is nothing better than you there is nothing nothing is better than you there is nothing better than you there is nothing better than you there is nothing Nothing is better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Father, as your people go out, open the eyes of their understanding show them problems to solve show them problems to solve give them an oh my god unequal unfathomable the people will look at them and they'll say we can't understand where you got this kind of wisdom that like pharaoh spoke to joseph you say who else has this kind of wisdom that by the solutions they propose Promotions will come their way. Increase and multiplication will come their way. Opportunities will be presented to them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. There's nothing. Ah. Uh -huh.